fear, they do indeed have an 80% win rate on Underlord. This is Game and Gladiator's bread and butter. It was off meta for a while, so we didn't really get to see it that much, but it is back in a form, and it's with a bit of a twist with this new addition to the Game of Gladiators hero pool, the Duraccio Clinks, that they didn't really play too much until uh, Wallachia came around, and they jammed it a lot at that tournament, and I've already drafted it uh, a couple times here at Dream League. You think Duraccio likes Dota? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's just start there well, before we get into this game. Okay. Because this guy, it seems like he only likes two heroes at a time. So I think he's playing. I think he, he is. I think he thinks he's playing League of, League of Legends right here. <laughs> but only certain heroes are available at any period. Like you know, they're locked behind a paywall. Guys, I can only play Clink's Alchemist for this tournament. But I don't have the other heroes unlocked for the month. Sorry, we're gonna just have to run it the whole way through. I have to play I the know. champions of the week. Yeah, I, I think he's. I think he's a little confused. So someone maybe tell him he's playing Dota here and everything's free to play. But so far, it has been working out decently for him. The yeah. running Clink's against the Clink's God himself in Ame. Yeah, that's, uh, if anybody's going to know how to stop that hero, it's going to be Ame. And he's going to be rocking the Chaos Knight, a hero that I imagine is quite good at killing the Clinks. Uh, also, while Game of Gladiators did have a, a good win rate with Clinks, uh, they did pretty well with it at Wallachia. It was also the way they went out of the tournament. They lost to Boom with uh, their last game of Clinks. So, you know. So some might say they... Skeleton walked their way straight to Dream League, huh? No, 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 that was... Yeah, look at this early ward by uh, Jin Q. You're going to see a lot of these because this guy loves killing these couriers. And honestly, I go... I, I mean, this is something that enrages me more than maybe anybody else in the world. Like, people are just really lazy with these couriers. And he gets them every time. It's so much gold for the team. Because it's global gold, it affects all three lanes instantly. You already are seeing XXS laughing here. It's just free value in the bank. It happens time and time again. I don't know how you go in a game against this guy and lose couriers to him anymore without getting reprimanded by your coach afterwards. And if the coach isn't reprimanding you, then somebody needs to be reprimanding the coach. <laughs> Which is where you need a... Uh, Sorry, you need general manager. That's general right. General manager. Where's I? Where is... Yeah. Where are the eyes of the world? To yell at the bulbas of the world. To yell at the celeries of the world. Who coaches the coach? And these are not heroes you want to give the extra courier gold to either. Like Jin Q plays a lot of these weird fours. You give him this extra acceleration, suddenly he just has a normal game on a lot of the heroes that may be out of the meta, the Rickies, the Nagas, the Shakers, not heroes that are supposed to be having normal or quick early games. This guy makes it work. Yeah. And that's why he's just such an explosive player because you give this guy a start like that, he's, he's going to run away with it. He's going to mess you up in the mid game. And we are. <laughs> Here comes another <laughs> he's one. He's lurking, man. He's lurking. I swear. No. Oh, there you go. See, okay, he yeah. Sells. A little discipline pays off, right? I swear, if this guy could blood grenade couriers, he, he would be doing it. <laughs> That's probably how he went to the next pack. Fairy fire goes off, but DY has this kill in the bag, and that is going to be first blood. Nice solo pick up there. That is not an easy solo kill to find. Yeah, how did he get that hoodwink so low while his HP is so high? I mean, Techies can now trade a lot just based off the range. But again, not not an easy kill to find on your own on the side. DY continues to perform exemplary here for this XG team. <laughs> Look at Jin Q. He's like, oh, you went up and around, did you? Okay. I mean, he oh. knows they're here 100%. If you can't affect the lane, and the lane isn't too bad for XXS, this isn't getting punished too heavily right now. I mean, normally, if he's going to play this game, your, your route is gaming is to just 2v1 the Doom and force him off the wave entirely. And this is a lane that can do that with Abaddon, he can get early Avernus points. He can abuse the curse versus a melee hero. You control the equilibrium, and then all of a sudden, XXS is getting nothing, which I guess is the situation here. Yeah, he has two CS. Two CS yes. with, with no Devour yet. So, so they, you know, they are playing the it pretty well. This is what you want to have happen in this type of exchange. I go back to those Monkey King games for Jin Q. Yeah, it looks great. It looks fancy. But the downside is your offlaner can get abused in the one on two. So you have to. It's a game of give and take, right? You want to do it a little bit, but then you want to come back to the lane, make sure your Doom's getting something, then be annoying again. It looks a lot easier than it is, especially in these high-level games. Nice bushwhack, catching the two of them there. Some nice trade-out of damage. D-Wide, though, does manage to get the D-Ward. 
trying real hard. That's probably where that clash came in in the first place. How he got first blood was Tofu's trying to work very hard to block out that easy camp and not let the Techies Chaos Knight lane, which is a high damage lane. That is a killing lane for sure. Oh, there he goes. Jin Q steps a little bit too far forward there. It gets slowed down by the curse of uh, Avernus and run down by the Clinks. We don't see Abaddon a lot, but this is where a melee five such as him can really shine in these lanes where he just abuses the hell out of other melee heroes. It creates a free farm situation for Duraccio here. And Gaiman are going to be happy about that. On the flip side, Ame also free farming. And these mid laners are kind of trading out. So the rest of the game is pretty even here. But XG are going to be playing a little bit of a back foot with their off laner. Though I say that in XXS making something happen for himself here. Getting close to it. Oh, that shields. I was about to say, could he actually fight XXS and get that win? Not anymore, that's for sure. The Fisher comes through, it's closed. Ah, there was a bunch of one charges. That would be the difference there. That's a big kill pickup for him, because he was not finding anything on this lane. No. And again, these are the small things you cannot give away to this team, because they take them and they enter that mid game, which is where the strength of this team lies. And they just run you over in the fights. I think XXS has probably looked like the best team fighting offlaner the last month. Maybe outside of ATF. Who's, yeah. It was also a beast in those fights, but it feels like if this guy gets his big team fighters, if he gets the Dark Seers, the Enigmas in like the right game, Doom can kind of fit that category sometimes. Man, he just takes those fights over. Boy, Celery is a nuisance, man. Just comes back from that death, no problem. I'm just gonna run at the Doom again. So XXS not having a great time. Mid, we didn't watch too much of. Uh, I did notice that the Zeus is missing a bit of CS there, and it looks like he's still falling a bit behind Quinn. Though the fight going out at bottom lane, double blood grenades going out. And that'll ensure the death of the Underlord. DY and Jin Q will chase after Tofu now. Yeah, might be able to get both here. Yeah, they land the bomb. Oh, yeah, XM is here. XM is here to clean up the kill. He'll take that last hit. Nice rotation. Quinn gets some damage back, but not enough for an assassinate kill. I mean, sacrifice the six-minute power rune, but well worth it here to put the CK tri lane to use it. That's exactly what you're looking for with the Shaker. Again, you're going to sacrifice this off lane for a greedier four, but you want to find something in the early game with that four, so you get a couple courier kills, cheeky kill in the jungle, and then you make that rotation, get a numbers advantage. Now you almost have arcane boots. You can start to look for some plays around the Zeus, or maybe counter plays top for the seven-minute wisdom rune. Not a rune you want to lose here if you're XG in one... Jinku is definitely going to prioritize. Yeah, I mean, thinking back, uh, they won so many games with that Underlord. But I feel like I remember watching a couple of games where they did Radiant's lose. And the trend was always that Ace got shut down really, really hard early on on the Underlord. So maybe that can prevent Game and Gladiators from hitting their stride here. Fisher's going to block them out, make sure that they can get the Wisdom Rune to XXS. So even more recovery there. That leaves one of the supports high and dry when it comes to the extra experience, but very much needed blast off, goes off and hits the Underlord. Don't think they have enough damage to kill him, but certainly enough to threaten him, force him back and keep him away from uh, some CS. Got two denies as a result. Now the only question I have this game, Austin, is, okay, will we see the Mega Pit? <laughs> Are you talking about the Agadim Scepter for the Underlord? Or are you talking about the Bloodstone build? I'm talking about all of it. Oh, my brother. <laughs> he also has a talent. Do not forget this hero has That's AoE true. talents for his Firestorm slash pit. You yep. can get a big ass pit. Love me a big pit. What? That is a, I'm telling you, it's big. It's I, real big in that fight. I've I, I seen it. I've seen it. It is not good. <laughs> it is not good at all. It is not worth the like 15,000 gold mean, it takes. Maybe, maybe you're just not a man who appreciates a big pit. Yeah, well, either way. I do want to see it this game. I also don't want to see it for gaming's sake. If you're, I guess, if you're a gaming fan, you don't want to see it because I do think it's a, a waste of investment. XM caught after that kill. Ooh, Real nice rough for him there. Good rotation by the four position again. Both four positions are moving around the map and leaving their off laners a little bit high and dry. Though it is definitely the Underlord who is faring better in that regard. Though I guess Doom has better recovery just because of Devour? Yeah, I was about to say, I don't, I don't think XG are sad about this setup. Like, you pick Shaker, the lanes are basically going even for you. 
Probably still get this kill, no problem, but missed bushwhack there from Tofu. Cost them a couple extra seconds to get it. Now this next five or so minutes here is going to be the scary part of this early game for XG because Gaiman definitely have some tempo advantage on their support duo. Uh, this Hoodwink Abaddon can run around, they can skirmish around the Sniper, the Clinks can get involved. You can just run these three or four-man operations around these towers, around the power runes, and it's going to be tough for XG to contest with you know, Techie, Shaker, who just need more levels here. They need more time. They need a couple more cheeky kills, one or two more couriers. That Arcane Boots on Jin Q would be pretty big. Their spells are just not as impactful right now in terms of dealing these skirmish damage, so... They also have some answers to the backline of Clinks and Sniper, but those answers come in much later, right? It's gonna be oh, Earthshaker Blink really? Dagger, it's gonna be Ame's Blink Dagger as like a third item or something. And you do have this Abaddon Shield to bail that jump out, so it's not as straightforward True. as they want it to be in this game. DY gonna be caught by the smoke rotation, not quite blocked out by that tree, but a bushwhack lands and gives Quinn easily enough time to do the damage. Didn't have to use the Assassinate there, but Ame is surrounded here. Gonna pop his ultimate though. It actually brings Quinn into a dangerous position here. Celery has to throw out the Aphotic Shield to help out. The Doom goes out. Oh, nice. Fisher. Fisher blocking both Tofu and Quinn in, though they can't quite get their heroes on top of the rest of them. They burn out Celery. They get some damage on Tofu, but they can't keep chasing. Not quite into Ace. Oh, Tofu spotted though. XXS, if you could get one good swing at him, the Hoodwink will probably go down. But it turns around, hits the Bushwhack instead. Duraccio's gonna go for that kill. XXS crawling himself away, gets pulled in by the carry. Ami's going for it, but he gets shot down by Quinn first. A blast off, landing on the two of them. Duraccio's going to go down, but he can get some damage. More damage on his Jin Q, shot which two. Quinn will collect another one. Now a third scout How about three? DY, making a triple kill for Quinn. I was at Arlington. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to shoot. That's a good old American boy right Woo. there. <laughs> taking names, taking headshots. Triple for the sniper here in the early game. You do not see that often. I'm surprised he had the mana for that. Oh, uh, seriously. Like, what the hell is he getting the mana for all these assassinates? But played the distance game well. Where's through the doom, through the Thunder God's get even more here? XM slowed down, but also... They're going to get the shaker again? Where's the cowboy hat Radiant's cosmetic out. for sniper, man? That ends up being a disaster for XG in the safe lane. And it gets worse and worse. It's XXS solo kill by Duraccio. They didn't need Ace or Tofu for that one. And, and they're going to all line back through the gate. Not Quinn, though. He's going to deal with the mid push that's coming in. Man, what a rotation from Gaiman. It felt like that didn't work at the start. Mm -hmm. They got fissured under the tower. The sniper's doomed. Almost dies to the Zeus ult. But the re-engage there was... Very nice from them, and they're going to keep another failed bushwhack there. Tofu having a rough time with those. I feel like that was probably more of a poke than a kill attempt Radiant's anyway here. Maybe yeah. lacking some of the damage, but just a nice turnaround for them. And we are seeing the the type of formation that can cause XG problems in these early fights. Right? If you're not on top of the sniper, if you're not on top of the clings for the duration on the second half, it's going to cause you problems eventually. Uh, no! <laughs> what? <laughs> that was pixels away from landing. That would have been some deso charges here. Yeah. So these kills are going to matter a lot for game. Again, this this 15 to 20 minute period is, is really scary for XG. This is the period they want to get through on even footing. They're going to be really happy. And then they can start to pick up the big damage items, the lockdown between the Shaker and the CK and take those fights back. But right now, it definitely feels like game and have a bit of a reach advantage. No, they're going to miss it there. And they are picking up the pace. Radiant's yeah, they are running tower. extreme gaming attack. over, which is part of the advantage they have with the Underlord, right? They can make these kind of extreme Radiant's rotations of tower. moving a lot of heroes to one side of the map and not be punished for it because they have this gate to allow them to get back into position somewhere else on the map. Can even gate to the other gate. Oh, it's true. Gate on gate action. Dota has become a gated community. You would know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never once lived in a gated community. Thank you. 7 to 9, 2,000 net worth lead for Game and Gladiators. No, I was referring to the gatekeeping of the... Oh, the well, of ball. course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a metaphorical game. <laughs> the Dota talent scene is a gatekeep gate-kept community. Well, Gaiman are going to start looking for these two or three-man pickoffs, especially on the side lanes. They can split XG up. I think this mid-tower is probably going to be the hardest for them to get. This is the tower that 
XM wants to defend with his life. Like, you need the Zeus to be able to play around this tower to at least Radiant contest some of the power runes. Be a position you can take a defensive fight around, so... They gotta go for the Wisdom Room. They gotta go for the Wisdom Room yeah, in Mass, exactly. too. Which might end up being Radiant good for stand. Extreme here, just because they have Ame around this territory, and they're gonna find Tofu. Blast off on him. He shoots himself to the other side, but the double Radiant minds protects the Wisdom <laughs> Rune. <laughs> I don't know if that was so next level. He outplayed himself almost or what, but that was top tower that was sexy. I'll tell you that was that was sexy. <laughs> Ooh, three bounty runes for Celery. That Game of Gladiators have been doing so well. They haven't been playing on their side of the map at all. So just got 150 gold for every player. They're still a little bit behind on XP, but again, if you can get that good defensive fight around this tier one, which is what they want. Radiant it could mean a lot. Uh, yeah, you said, resources. You said this one's the hard one to take, but how do they stop a sniper that Game and Gladiator yeah, I mean, is I guess. up with 2K net worth and an abandoned fallen. Underlord sitting there yeah, watching you, the sniper hit? What are you now? supposed to do? I, I think if you have full resources on Zeus, there's some potential there, but this early game's just been a little too chaotic for them. And that's going to be, you know, second tier one tower down here by 15. A lot of space for Gaiman to work with here. If they can play aggressive with the clinks, with the hoodwink heroes, that can set those kills up, create that threat. Still looking for the levels here for XG. You really want that 12 point for the CK to get some more Phantasm up. He has it now, but we'll have to wait 60 seconds here for Ame. Get some more illusions on the map. And you're really looking for that first Shaker item. Like, you have your Phylactery Zeus. XM's ready to go. Techie's always going to be able to fight, but... Shaker needs the shard or he needs the blink. Dyer's top tower and even after that, attack. if you go the early shard build, then you really need the levels on top of that to make it work. And Jin Q is still... Okay, he did get the seven, so he has max fissure here. It's a decent amount of damage. We'll see what he opts for. I, I, I could see this game going either way, depending on how he feels. Like, they're in a fine position Dyer's where he could maybe play a little greedy or go for attack. that blink. Uh, generally, you don't want to go the shard if you also go 4-1-1. Just pretty low value. Yeah. I mean, Blink is also not the highest value, but the Blink is going to come out later when maybe you're level 8 or 9. And then you can compensate for it. Spots Tofu. Thunder God's Wrath for the Extra Vision could not get another Arc Lightning off, nor another Lightning Bolt. So, Thunder God's Wrath there. I mean, it does give them a little bit of security. They know where some of these heroes from Gaming Gladiators are as a result. They're making an invasion into the Triangle at the time. But... Missing out on another kill. Duraccio sneaking in from behind. He's going to just execute Jinku so damn quickly. Now the shot goes down, trying to chase after XM. XM can either go for the TP, go for the outpost. Looks like a TP it is. Another nice find for his clinks, getting some Deso charges. And also more lost ground for Extreme Gaming as they're going to lose control of this triangle area. Probably the offlane tower is going to be taken. The map is getting small later. And you go back to this draft and the idea of you saw the Clink's hoodwink early. You knew they were going to play this pickoff game. Generally, one of the ways you can counteract that is you either just group with auras yourself. Don't give them the pickoff opportunity. That doesn't really exist for the XG lineup. The other way, I mean, you can just team fight as 5-2, but their team fight's taking a while to come online. The other way is you have heroes that can just push these waves out super fast. You have Zeus and CK who can do that, but those also feel like the heroes you need in the fight. Those are your playmakers, your, your fight starters here. As XXS had the rough early game, does manage to find a blink here, but does not have the centaur stomp, so his initiation is there. He does not have the Dust? Dust? Hello? That is a rough one. That is a really rough one for XG. Oh, they and now that. DY is going to run into him, breaks the smoke, but the move is already being made by Gaming Gladiators. They're going to kill Ame. No real contest here. Extreme Gaming are just struggling to get out of danger with the rest of their heroes. At such a costly, honestly, just mistake from XG. Yeah. Not having the detection there. They pay a Doesn't have Blast Off to get away, so they'll die as well. Is this just Roche for Gaiman in the next, like, two to three minutes here? I mean, it could be Roche. It could also be them getting, like, we got Wisdom Rune coming up, as well as Tormentor. Gaiman Gladiators, they feel like they're far enough ahead to me that they could take enemy Tormentor and take that Wisdom Rune. I'm not sure if Extreme can fight back. 
They have a really fast lineup for taking these objectives on the map with the early Deso. Sniper benefits off it. Underlord's going to negate your physical going into them, so this physical damage battle that's being waged right now is just a nightmare. And th their heroes are just not going to be coming online soon for Extreme. He went the shard on the Earthshaker, so no Blink Dagger for a long time. Uh, no Blink Dagger on Ame for a long time. He is... Uh, he has unfortunately struggled a little bit. He's got Armlet Orchid. He's going to be working towards uh, a Manta next, but we're not going to see him be able to have an easy way to just, you know, blow up a Sniper or a Klinks at the start of one of these fights. And if they don't do it quickly, then I feel like the longer fight always going to favor Game and Gladiators. I mean, Game and, it feels like they definitely want to accelerate this game. I mean, Quinn's frozen, but... Overall, they want to pick this pace up as much as possible because, yeah, I agree. The next set of items for XG is when their lineup comes online. It's your tanky item for XXS, whether that's BKB or Shiva's, you know, whatever he opts for first here, that'll let him jump in the fight. That blink for the Shaker to let him get the damage output off of Big Echo. And that blink, probably BKB for Ame to let him commit in, right? It's a lot of gap close, a lot of durability that they're looking for in these next two to three items coming out. If you let them get there and this game is even in the next at the next 20 minute mark, so at 40 minutes, if this game is even, I think XG are favored in those five on fives. But the question is, can they keep up with the objectives on the map and can gaming accelerate them fast enough that, okay, if you get Roche in the next two minutes here, you get a Tormentor, you get another tier two, you're knocking on the high ground. Ugh. I don't know what the hell that is, but <laughs> it was knocking on somebody's door. I see that in my dreams tonight. Jesus. What do you dream about, my man? <laughs> Having some uh, some nice jet lag dreams over there. <laughs> I'm always amazed that Valve Why? actually like made something like that. Like, you know, somebody at Valve made whatever that is and edited the tongue in there, and all you know. And then meanwhile, Morphling's on like six pixels from 20, <laughs> 2008. Like he's fine. <laughs> I gotta make this. Morphling guy. looks like something straight out of a browser game. It's crazy, you know? And, like, you know, the guy who made this probably has, like, eight PhDs. <laughs> I, I respect it, dude. I respect, high levels. High quality level. That's what we're looking for here. That's true. So, you, uh, we talked about going into PGO Wallachia, like, teams that are kind of struggling and whether or not that tournament they were going to be able to come back and play. And I think the, the two names that we talked about the most about, Game of Gladiators and Team Liquid, Right. Neither one of them, I think, really shook that off. Still recovering. This is definitely a, a good start for Gaming Gladiators, though. Taking, like, taking a very dominant game one over Extreme, who obviously had a very successful tournament. Uh, I mean, they haven't won it yet. <laughs> I mean, they're taking it. <laughs> okay, what what would you give their win chance? I also I, think I would give it like eighty percent no, plus. It is, what? Yeah, eighty percent. What are you smoking over there, man? <laughs> okay, what is it then? What would you say it is? I think XG are one of the better comebacks. Gaben, agrees yeah, with me it over eighty percent. He's probably rolled the same blunt you did before <laughs> he gave that prediction. <laughs> that I Seattle you that. saw hits hard. Yeah, you know? I mean Seattle is an expensive city for a reason. Like, <laughs> I would give. I don't even think it's that unfavorable. I think XG are one of the better comeback teams. I would agree I think with that. They are one of the best teams in the world right now. Okay. I think. Their draft is perfectly playable. It's not like this draft is unplayable from behind. I think, if anything, you expect this lineup to be behind. Dyer's right? The next, again, the next set of objectives is scary. Like, you're going to give away a Roche here. You're probably going to give away a Tier 2. Ideally, you don't give away that 21-minute Tormentor. You know, the 20 to 21 minute in the Tormentor Wisdom Rune. But you might not have a choice. I think this is like a 65. Okay. 65-35 type game. I mean, that I, sounds I like to me you're bad. giving... That win percent, like a solid 15% bump just because it's extreme. Well, That's yeah, what it man. Like to me. If I put you in the ring with Mike Tyson, I'm <laughs> giving him a bump too. <laughs> it's going to knock you on your ass. Like, I don't care how good of a boxer you think you are. <laughs> oh, no, he died. I thought he was going to live. Uh, I mean, at least he, oh, he didn't get it. No, he did he not get the shard because he already bought his. A noble attack. sacrifice. It was between him and... Yeah, he doesn't uh, look phased at all, dude. He's chilling. Uh-huh. Or maybe he's just fully in the grips of despair. Nah, he's chilling. 
Well, I'm, I'm watching Tier 2's fall. Are they going to get the Wisdom Rune? Looks like they're going to be too late to get the Wisdom Rune. On my head for it. I mean, that's a big, honestly, a decent win for XG. They got that Tormentor and Wisdom Rune. I think Gaming should have contested that. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought they were going to get That is both. way more valuable than that Tier 2 mid that would have been there regardless, right? Yeah. Especially since they had these towers down top. I think that was like a guaranteed smoke play for them. You can even smoke two people in, or three and gate somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I think a missed opportunity. And you don't want to miss these kinds of opportunities because that's how XG you're going to get back in this game. You're already seeing that lead get cut down. Now all of a sudden, you have this veil on the Doom. You have your Blink Dagger up. No, that you're series of events fight. literally bumped that win percent down like 5%. Now, DY. That is pit storm used, but I guess XG are just going to try and look for slain else on the lane. They're going to run right into Taracio. They will gra grab him. He's got gone. Him. Thunder God's wrath. That is a huge kill. 1,100 gold. What a read by them. They just completely ignored that fight on the backside. Knew who they wanted. Find Taracio. Instant TP out with everybody. And they even get a power rune on the, on the backside of that. Not the greatest one for the Zeus, but again, you're getting something on the map. Yeah, I mean, there, there is, when it comes to target prioritization, uh, I feel like this is one of the easier games. Yeah, they're in the same spot. The uh, You don't want to go for the Abaddon or the Underlord. I thought he was like, are you, are you in the room? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think he's too used to being on Zhao 8's team. Oh, huh? well, look at Jin Q. He's got a trick, apparently, to, to help stabilize the internet. He's going to help him out. I can help you guys. Yeah, we're 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 about to watch on yes. the Game and Gladiators uh, uh, cams. Jin Q is gonna come in. Yes. And Go top left and I then click disconnect. And <laughs> then click quit game. And then it'll ask you for a prompt. Do you want to remove the lag? You click yes and confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Jin Q always always eager to help out the competition here. This guy is always a laughing. happy guy. Yeah, yeah, it's insane, man. I've never seen a Dota player so happy in life. <laughs> yeah, a Avery a Avery is a <laughs> massive Jin Q fan because I think he how just can you doesn't not understand be? how somebody could be happy playing Does, does Dota. he even have a headset on? <laughs> like, <laughs> is is no. he even playing with a headset? No, he's just yelling. This guy's a beast, bro. He doesn't he's need old school. Man. Doesn't need audio cues. I love watching this guy play. I mean, if you don't love watching this guy play Dota, you're just not a fan of Dota, man. Yeah, you know, that's probably true. Some people just represent what this game is. My man's doing it. Nice deep ward from Celery. These are the deep side wards that you want in a game like this because you know XG are continuing to dodge you. You have to set yourself up to find pickoffs on the lanes, which means the deeper the lane wards you can get, abuse the fact you have some of these tier two towers down, you're going to be able to set that up. We haven't really seen those be able to stay up long for game, and they missed that Tormentor play, and now this leads back down Dyer's to 2K. Where the hell is your 80% win chance now, Austin Walsh? I mean, it's it's falling fast right now. They are going to get this quick kill onto the Techies Underlord. Is it that quick? coming through, and the Clinks is going to take out from this dude. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. That, that's another he's done so. big win for XG here. He joins his skeletons. I like how XXS stuck around. He like got the Klinks kill and he's just like, well, there's, I'm just gonna live in this area now. Yeah, I was a little greedy by him, but it will be something Clint. else. Oh, they've got him. I don't think the Symphonic Shield can really save. Oh, he's got Glimmer Cape too. They do have dust for it, but Quinn still has Aegis. Ame didn't want to keep going for it, I guess, with the extra Aegis. Yeah, not worth it, but yeah. we're starting to see that threat come along, right? Again, the next set of items XG got to them here. They have the blink on the CK. They're getting yep. to that tank item on the Doom. And hey, that blink for the Shaker plus the levels, it's here in 100 gold. So are you happy with the last 10 minutes here if you're gaming? No. There is no way you are in this game. Dude, I, I felt like there was, you know that first pause that happened? I felt like there was like a momentum. Not, sh I mean, kind of shift. It was just slowed down a lot for Game and Gladiators. I just don't think they played that period well. Yeah, I don't think so. I think there was room for abuse, room to build an advantage. Doesn't mean you're going to automatically win that game, but I think XG got everything they wanted. And I mean, 
You could also make an argument XG dodged pretty well here, right? They found these little pickoffs and trades and things like this, where DY is just setting up on his own to bring XF in. And is this going to be a kill? Yeah, he has, a, he has an amp damage rune. So, Easy. again, these small trades XG are fine. Just really heads up map play and punishing Duraccio for playing alone. It's another death for the Clinks. while Ame is, I mean, he's laughing it up, man. Just farming everything. Top net worth all of a sudden in the game. They have Midas on the Doom. His Shivas is done. I don't know how it's still giving them 80% <laughs> win probability. Yeah. I mean, is there something about the hero matchups that... I think it's rating this Underlord pretty high in this game because it probably thinks it's still 2000 and, and you know, 22 or, or whatever. <laughs> but, you really struggled uh, to find the date on that one, huh? I was trying to think of when Underlord was last good, but it's been a while. Yeah. This hero is not what he was two or three years ago. He, he does not sway the team fight nearly as much, even though he has Why? the wars, even though he has his level. There wasn't that much that was nerfed about him, right? I think... I I mean, this might sound weird. I think he's just not Radiant as tanky Austin. as some of the other heroes have gotten. Yeah. No, I Like I these see primal it. beasts and dooms and these guys who get fast Shiva's guards and abuse them, Centaur that have four strength gains. I mean, these heroes that build heart are, yeah, are heart, just, uh, like Underlord's Eternal not Shroud. Fire. Like, I think a hero in Dota's tanky, if he has high strength gain, can build Eternal Shroud, can build heart, or can build Shiva's guard. That's what makes you tanky in Dota. And Underlord just doesn't really do any of those well. He can do them. He, We're gonna he likes go the, for the, the, the team fight for us. Yeah, he likes Pipe Greaves. Yeah. He likes Crimson Guard when it's in the meta. He likes Vlad's buildups when they're in the meta. I mean, right? I feel like... Helma the Dominator. If you can push with that. Like, is there any reason you can't build those items, though? No, like, I feel like a, if can. Omar was playing this Underlord, he'd be going those items. I mean, he'd probably have, like, a Bissell AC by now or something. <laughs> like, that's an entirely different argument. But the thing is, this is how Gaiman used the Underlord. Which I think is right. It's fine. It's won them a lot of games in the past. It's good. It's a good way to use a hero. It's just not as strong as it used to be because, you know, you're looking at this Underlord with Greaves Pipe Veil right now, and you're comparing him to a Doom with a Shiva's. Which would you rather have in the fight? I think the Shiva's is just a more powerful item. Yeah. And then you're gonna get this Mech Greaves on the techies anyway. So especially if you have any magic damage behind that Shiva's, exactly, it's such a value item. And they've got a Zeus. They've got an Earth Shaker. They've got techies. They've got tons of magic damage. So I, I think the buildup for the hero is just slightly worse as a tank frontliner. It's not as impactful as it used to be, which hurts him in the meta. Can he still have viability here? 100%. Like, I think if Ace can get to, you know, one or two more items here, then all that's going to kick him, and he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. You cannot underestimate how effective Pipe is versus this XG lineup in the yeah. Shaker, the Zeus, the Techies. There's a lot to negate here. So maybe you can get to that point where you go over that threshold and you become just too tanky for XG to deal with. This Underlord will always be annoying for the Chaos Knight illusions, but Ame can also play around it. Ame doesn't have to just go into the Underlord brick wall. You have Zeus ult to give vision in this game. You have a Doom who can jump in with Shiva's give vision in this game. The CK does not have to be the first point of initiation contact for XG. He can just sit back, play a flank angle, find the sniper off a blink rift orchid, you're gone. Okay, and then all of a sudden that fight's fine for him. He doesn't care if his illusions die to Firestorm over six seconds. Counterpoint here, even though he is a hero that gets on top of these these ranged backline heroes, these ranged backline heroes, especially when they're head, are not that squishy anymore, right? Like, Clinks has this death pack, so he has, like, tons of extra HP. The sniper builds have have a lot of stats to them. He's going to be going BKB. He's going to get that shard as well, which it could be really helpful for dealing with the illusions. What a shot. All right. Just that a casual ca little casual. pick off high ground into half damage on a tier three. They really punished that casual fissure. I mean, now, yeah, you are right. These heroes are going to be tanky, and we're going to see this push happen without an Aegis. So, Gaiman really believe in their sustain right now. As Try they to go for the Glinks, got him on the Doom. He gets off the BKB, but it looks like the damage is already done. They have a Fodic Shield, actually. Maybe they can block out enough damage that the Doom doesn't kill the Clings? Very close, but he's going to live here. Oh, okay. no, he doesn't. <laughs> I mean, he would have lived through the Doom. Sure, sure, <laughs> I'll believe that. But he was doomed nonetheless. He just didn't know it. I mean, you got a Shaker by, but again, another small trade. XG are very happy with here. And now they're going to they're gonna hunt. 
No clinks. That is a big opening in the fight. You better run your ass out of there, Cardell. They're thinking about turning. Is this a turn? I think it is. Two already on the sniper. Echo slam Ooh, all the damage. damage. He gets off the BKB though, thanks to the aphotic shield. And he's Ame's trying to turn the damage back on Ame. Ame is already dead. The Underlord's about to die, but it killed one of the mines. He's staying alive. He's killing DY instead. Now XM is chasing after Quinn because he knows that's where all the damage is. But look at all of the heroes that are up for XM trying to chase. That sniper BKB was really strong right there. Just lets Quinn disengage and then turn the damage into Ame, who gets stuck in that Firestorm pit. Really did some big work on him there. Ace proving that he can be a substantial frontline in these situations where XG are trying to commit through him onto the back side of the team. I don't think XM's going to be able to do this. I, I think the Sniper... Yeah, this looks iffy. ...and Abaddon are going to be... I mean, he, he has a we'll lot see. here, though, right? Like, he has full resources, basically, with that Lotus. Yeah. He has he, Octarine, Flackery, 3,000 HP, and this Sniper has no BKB. Yeah. This is a pretty scary situation for Gaiman. I, I... If they can regroup here, like, they might be able to get this Zeus, but... He does do some decent damage. Yeah, we'll see what, how much they're able to kite out, right? Can Quinn survive through this next round of shots and maybe a right-click or two that comes in, especially with the Manta movement speed that he has? He has nothing, so something to keep in mind. It's absolutely nothing here, but he can just turn and fight. He's got to Turns, do that. XM tries to throw out the damage, pops that Manta, but the shield comes through, XXS. He leans in, the extra bit of damage, they do manage to get that kill, though. XM also falls, so maybe uh, it's about even between the two of them. I XXS, respect that, Midas. He's now going to get run down as Jin Q died to Tofu, oh. so he's the last one left. Oh. Will not be able to TP away. Give him the mana burn before you go. Yeah, see, there's some value right there. This guy's a heads up play. Sure. Oh, All right. Annoying. What a great turn from Gaming Gladiators. They lost one hero off of that and wiped Extreme. Is that right? Did they just go in a four Radiant versus five and lose one hero? Yeah, well, it's like Reddit's been saying for the last three years, they're better with, with Duran <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> uh, that's the only time I'm going to make that joke. It's not true. It's definitely not. <laughs> it is a weird situation, though. Like, they lose their carry for free going high round. Yeah. And then just crush that fight for v 5 Yeah. Like, absolutely crushed it. I mean, so now they're going to have a six on five where the clink can front line without getting pushed, without getting killed cheaply like that. Right, so this should be a rat if you execute it well here. Well, but they have two Duraggios instead of no Duraggios. Yeah, so that cancels out. So now they're going to win the game. Oh, okay, like two negatives. <laughs> I didn't say it. I didn't say it, man. <laughs> uh, I mean, they did have to use a lot to kill Duraggio, right? They had to, they had to yes. uh, use both Doom and Thunder God's Wrath. Which is why that chase the... ends up backfiring. Yeah. Don't have enough in the tank there. Especially if Ame is, he was the only one with, like, resources left. And he frontlined and got 100 to 0 like pretty quickly. And he, he went Manta, not BKB this game, which nothing wrong with this build, but it does hurt him in the situations where he gets caught in the pit. Yeah. Like if you get bushwhacked into this pit or something, you're slowed in there and you get that pit proc a second time on the Chaos Knight, that's a huge debilitator for him. Rachio steps forward. And now the Shaker. Gets back he's down. Dead. Yeah, he's done. Shinky punished again. We're just being up on these base defenses. I'm respecting the poke range here. And yeah, I don't think there's much you can do about this Rax. I think Aegis just, just guarantees it here. I don't think you can fight until Phantasm and Earthshaker is back up, so. Phantasm back up now. We'll try and get level 20 as well. Yeah, this is this is gonna be a lane that XG wanna take the fight on, especially with Glyph. Maybe delayed a little bit here, get the Shaker back up. They're just gonna Last start it. on two. They have Doom they the used Underlord. The Doom on the Underlord, so they did go for the big tanky guy at the beginning. Yeah, but this is this is kind of a free fight for the two range cores. They want to commit. They do not want to keep going high ground. I mean, you buy back on the techies, and you don't have the Underlord anymore. You don't have that big front line. Yeah, it's a, it's so. a scary push there, but I, I would have been a little tempted. Honestly. Yeah, you know, no Doom. We, st we have two lives on this clink. But, okay, I mean, PKB on Ame, yeah, maybe a good decision to back off. 
Ame pops that Phantasm, tries to chase forward. Fisher catches him, doesn't uh, quite get the vision of Horatio, and instead it's going to be DY, who uh, I guess doesn't die because Quinn isn't here. He's expecting an assassinate, but he's walking his way back in. Satanic suit for this guy. So he's going to he's gonna have so much effective HP if he gets off BKB and then gets off Satanic. Right, this is where this lineup is going to hit its stride. Like this second Aegis period, you have the ore items on the Underlord. You have that third, fourth tank item for these two range scores and the Hurricane Pikes and the, the Satanic. I mean, this is a classic game in lineup where you get that push going, you get some objective-based snowballing, and you just end that game in that like 35-minute window where the enemy team, they just can't get to that late game where maybe they can make the comeback. Okay, Mr. 65%, when, when does ex, uh, Extreme's lineup hit their stride? Because I, mean, I feel like it's only fight, in Game of Gladiators. They have to find a way to defend base on this fight. Oh, the double shot! They're flanking right now. Hot Dad. with the Echo, not enough damage to finish off Taracio, and then he's still got an extra life, and Quinn, he got off the BKB. The Satanic is sitting on the side, too. They still have an Aegis to work with. They still have the Satanic extra life still though banned. now Quinn is going to get run down by the Doom. Can they get any extra damage on him to actually finish off? Because I don't think so. I think XXS is all out of there. He got the Doom off, and that's about it. And Duraccio is fine on his second life. He was able to beat back that Chaos Knight. The Illusions are just not a threat to him. I mean, 80% chance to win is pretty high. You know, there's not much you can do to, <laughs> to stop that. <laughs> it was just a snowball. What a disorganized fight, though. Yeah, XG. a little bit. The Shaker jumped the wall. They're flanking, but nobody was close enough to follow up. Then you have Ame going with BKB. XXS is still three seconds out. Then he goes in and solo. Super disconnected. Not a typical fight we're used to seeing from XG. And I now mean, they're on their last lane here. They what, did get Aegis out of it. One thing we're seeing is just the AoE damage and control between the pit and the uh, Duraccio's uh, shard. Right? He shoots through these illusions and they all blow up so quickly. Yeah, the, the Clinks. Honestly, this Clinks DK matchup is not. It's not the worst of all of the, like, I'm a solo target range carry versus CK matchups that exist in the game. Mm -hmm. He actually has some gameplay versus CK. He can be annoying. He can be tanky. I mean, he's, he doesn't even have the level 25 multi-shot, right? True. Imagine he's burning Barrage with the tar multi-shot. Th those illusions are not going to do anything. Yeah, I don't even think this match is bad if you're ahead on the clinks. Yeah, if you have so the too. if you have the tempo advantage, if you're getting Aegises and, and Deso charges and all that, I don't honestly think you care. And they had the Underlord pick to bolster this this five man up. Really, an old school game and gladiators draft here. Something that's worked for them in the past that they haven't gone back to as much recently. But maybe just caught X XG off guard, not expecting this kind of ball up versus you, the Shaker, which is generally a hero that can punish that sometimes. Yeah. Do you think this is something that uh, that maybe Game and Gladiators oh, are just doing for themselves, right? Like they have been in a bit of a rut. That's that's my face when my when the carry on my team picks Anti-Mage. Mm. Oh. See, I thought that was just <laughs> us as a casting duo. You're just getting carried around. In a barrel all the whole time. That's a good life. <laughs> the uh, Game of Gladiators just have a rough go of it lately. I, maybe they had a talk yeah. of like, guys, what do we do best? What made us a championship team? What did make Game in a championship team? Ace on Underlord, apparently. Some would say it was Ace being the best off player in the world for a year. Yeah. Some would say it was their support duo, just outpacing people too mm. fast. Yeah. Raw speed and adrenaline. Some people would say that. Yeah. Some people would point to Duraccio's aggression. Mm. Just catch people off guard. Not many Redditors, but no. there's some of them Some of them know. Some of them know. Some would say it was a good old-fashioned American boy. Mm. From down south. <laughs> from Louisiana. <laughs> it's just a, a man with a gun. Just a man with a gun and a, a little raccoon hat. <laughs> and a mission in life. Yeah, where's the where's the Davy Crockett set for? Sniper? I can't believe I'm pretty you sure there is. It, honestly, what an embarrassment! This guy's an embarrassment to his region. Yeah, I mean he's he's <laughs> he's fully settled into uh, being a 
You're Europe West player now. Yeah, he's gone. He's ashamed of his, his heritage. We're gonna see how far they want to push this. No Aegis, but you do have that range <laughs> just, advantage. Can't even get close, man. I mean, this Abaddon has really caused them issues in this game because you can't commit. You can't poke them down because you have the sustain from the coils, and you can't commit because always have that counter wombo combo turnaround potential. Do it for a fresher on XM, so... I mean, Zeus, he's hitting his peak here. And I'm Jumping in. Force it. XXS, they already got the sniper down to the low ground. So yeah, you hit him with the Doom, but there's no other follow-up. He gets off BKB. They don't have any control for the sniper to prevent him from getting out of there. And now they try and go for any other hero that's still around. That's the Underlord. He gets a little bit low. Oh, Not too bad. Nice a lot of the fissure. Wait a minute, Echo. It's on a couple there with Ame pouncing off of that one. Already finishing off Dorachio, trying to get Tofu as well. But this damn pit, that big old pit is in his way. A buyback through the gate they go with Mega Creeps inbound. It is Extreme Gaming who are going to have to huddle around an ancient under siege from long range artillery. Duraccio buyback through the pit, or through the gate, is going to get here really fast. But you are down both supports on the side of XG. You have no Doom, no Phantasm, and no Refresher on the Zeus. You used it all to get that first kill. Media buyback, blink in, three-man Fisher. No jump in from Extreme. You add Ame on the side, trying to do something here, but he's having a BKB run away, and gaming Gladiators... They could either go for Ami and try and chase him down, which is what Duraccio wants to do, though the supports are doing it plenty fine. He lends the helping hand to do the finishing blow, but Quinn, he's holding them back. 2v4 right now with Ace sitting there on the front lines, and Quinn doling out the damage as the sniper. Missed out on the bushwhack. XM trying to jump away, but the damage comes in from Duraccio with the help from Quinn. They easily bring him down. Nice Ame still illusions. struggling to stay alive. The Fisher's going to block him in Jeez. out of the fountain, but it doesn't matter. Game and Gladiators will take game one over Extreme. Nice little game one for them. Nice setup. Honestly, the more I watch those fights, really decimated. Lost. That finals, game five against Animage. It has come back into their consciousness. Ame's like, all right, if your Toro can make Animage work, I should be able to make Animage work too, right? That is the Animage fallacy. Mm. That is where he gets you. Just when he has your confidence, he rips it away in horrifying fashion. You but know what, the last time, you'll, the the last time they played Animage on Extreme? Is it a trick question? Not really. It's two months ago. They played it on last season of Dream League, and uh, they actually played it against Team Spirit and lost. To battle. So maybe, uh, you know, anything you can do, I can do better. Maybe that's not the case for Ame and Andy Mage versus Yotoro. I feel like this hero always looks good on paper. This is another one of those games where there's just zero lockdown for him. Like, in theory, he just goes Omega Ham. You can ink swell him in, give him some extra stun, extra dispel here. You have cleanse as well if he really needs it. But damn, is this hero slow, man. The battle yeah. begins. He's just so slow. He has issues joining early fights compared to a lot of carries. And this is going to be a game where he just can't really do that because, like, who are you even mana voiding in these early fights? None of these heroes have mana pools. So that spell that normally can give AM the extra oomph to join the game earlier, I just feel like he's not on the table here. He really has to get to his items. This is a game where I expect XG to really rat the side lanes. Get a lot of value out of the AM split push. Uh, Shatter Demon can stack up some camps early, but you really want XXS to have a good lead in this early game. Like, his lane is perhaps the most important here for XG. If the Centaur has a good early game, which he should here, then he can maybe control the tempo a bit, give you that team fight starter they were lacking a bit last game, and buy time and space for Ame to come online. And I can see this lineup coming together and causing problems for gaming in the late game. However, gaming also have another lineup that might just run you over at that 30 to 35 minute mark with the second Aegis. Yeah, really did you... scary pace they could set here. I feel like after watching game one, the last thing I want to do is put gaming gladiators in a position where they need to play fast and close out the game quickly because they they have done that. They did that last game. They've shown they have a history of being able to do that. They're one of the better teams at being able to play fast Dota, I think. It is tempting fate a little bit. 
Maybe you're trying to take advantage of the fact they're not in the best form they've been in recently. But I agree, if there's one team you generally don't want to play heroes like Anti-Mage against, it's probably this team when they're in form. So, you, you're putting some pressure on yourself here. I mean, if it pays off, it's going to pay off big, but can you get to that point? Big question mark there, and I'm not talking about emo. Speaking of mid laners, XM is doing better at the start of this laning phase. Uh, we'll see if it continues. Quinn last time did manage to win that matchup, though, you know, it's not like anybody died. It's just uh, a CS advantage for to Quinn. You ever notice this Brewmaster set as a lobster on it? What? Yeah. What? If, if we can click on the Brewmaster and go to a, uh, a quick portrait mode of him while he's getting run down here. No, we can't go portrait mode? Doesn't I am work. looking at him in portrait mode right now. Where is the lobster? It's on his belt. On his wee little belt there. See it on the left side? It's a lobster. This is the fisherman brew set. Now my next question is, where the hell in the lore is this? Like, where's the lobster? Okay, I see it. Yeah, why does he have a lobster? What is the significance here? These are the questions of our times and the questions that will be answered here in game two of Gaming Gladiators <laughs> versus Extreme Gaming. They are playing for a million dollars this week at Dream League Season 23. That's right. If it goes uh, past 60 minutes, Avery will reveal the secret of the lobster. That's right. Stay I actually tuned. do know the answer. Okay. I don't believe See, I am a man a of the people. I know what they need. I know what they yearn for. And I <laughs> literally emailed Gabe Newell at ValveSoftware.com and asked him this exact question of why is there a lobster on the Brewmaster Cosmetic? Said. Uh huh. He did not respond to me yet. <laughs> <laughs> but in 60 minutes, we will have we a Gabe Newell official response. So far, he's doing pretty well in this lane, despite the cosmetics, despite the, the lobster watching. weighing him down. And honestly, I I think I think Brew's been winning lanes more often in the last few months than I've seen him in a long time. Double bracer build into some early like crit. Off the, the dance toggle, pretty damn strong, honestly. Like, you just smack people down. This is not a hero that needs his mana. Big burst. Is it enough? If they hit a third one, is that going to be a... No. Stick, Stick charges. charges come through. Too good. This is, this is not a lane I expect XG to find a kill on, but I think it's a lane they can do okay. You can always fall back on some stacking if it gets too tough. It's a lane that's just going to push into you. So if you maintain the resources and you don't get dove off a double or triple wave, you're going to be okay. But there is that threat. Darachio can just run you down with the quills if he has a double or triple wave going into the tower. So XG need to do a really good job of controlling the HP levels on that lane. Likewise here, XG are going to be able to burn all the mana out, but again, I think Brewmaster does better in this matchup than he used to. Just a product of the early stat builds plus the crit coming through. You can kind of play that just physical damage dealer versus the, the AM that you don't really care if you don't have mana anymore. He's just not winning that man fight. Yeah. It's kind of a wash Dyer's as well. So I, I don't think XG attack. can really dominate these lanes. They're, they're just going to try and go even in them. And maybe play around some support rotations. I, I can see DY maybe rotating with this Grim at the top if they feel like they can get a cheeky kill on the Bristle between the levels 4 and 5. But that window is going to close very fast. And if he doesn't feel like he can leave the Anti-Mage alone, which is a big question mark, then that move isn't the easiest to make here. But there isn't really another move to make in this game. That, that's kind of it for XG. Like, this, this is kind of a dead lane right now. So, I do think the HP and mana looks okay here. XG could consider that rotation. Well, let's see if DY opts for it. Certainly could use something to uh, change the narrative of the current laning phase. Everybody on Game of Gladiators is getting way too much. Which is why I think when you're the team that's not necessarily super happy with the static nature, you want to make the rotations or look for the runes or look for the stacking. Like, that is always the, the other thing you can do. Just out eco enemy team here. You fall behind a little bit in CS, but you make up for it with some stacks for the Zeus with the Arc Lightning going through, extra levels for the Shadow Demon. Six minute rune. I mean, this should be Gaimans. They have all the freedom to rotate here. And yeah, that's a double damage. That's. That is a scary rune. Though the catapult will die here. Still, I think Quinn might look for some, some extra tower damage here.
Feathering swell go. Try to turn back to get some damage on the Tofu. Burn away some of his mana. Doesn't quite work. I mean, they will have this nice combo of AM plus Inkswell. Yeah, so is Ame really going to be that active with it? It does help him a lot in the later fights. It's going to be a big spell this game. Soulbind is also going to be a big spell. I mean, your Mana Void targets aren't great, but if you get two of them, okay. That's something. And there's the rotation. This is... I, I feel like it's a minute, minute and a half too late here. Because now you have this Bristol to the level five. Io's going to have a bit more sustain, but DY will catch the Bristol here without the Io getting low off the stack. So this is about as good as it's going to get. Oh, no! Well, he, he messed this that goal up. This is embrace. That's a little awkward. The Inkswell still, though, should ensure the kill, and they're going to leave it to XM. Thunder God's Wrath. Yo, this ghost that going last hit, though. They are going to force out some TP's X success. He's going to TP out DY. Don't think he would actually make it out if he tried to TP, so better just to die. Yeah, he, he doesn't care. That, he got what he wanted out of that, which was that bristle kill in the four and five. So that was the one move I think actually could make in this game I was talking about. They make it. Yep. They get it to work. They did it a little later than I was thinking about because they had that Zeus ult come online. So it actually ends up just working a lot smoother. Because yeah. now you get the Zeus involved. You get that big kill with the ult. You're happy about that. Game are going to try and strike back top. Oh my god. God, I just got flashbang. <laughs> In real life. <laughs> Production just turned the very bright lights on us there for a second. XXS. Bumped back by the flame break. Uh, this is not fun. Centaur doesn't have any armor to work with, and now the stacks, you the cannot, stacks are in danger. You cannot afford to give this to Duraccio. Dude, they this have is insane acceleration for him. They have terrible stack clearing on the side of Extreme. I mean, it's Zeus, but and this is... Where is he? Where's the help to defend this? This is the biggest objective on the map right Where's now. Where's Zeus? Shin Q, he's, he's crying. Team, please. What, what do you mean he's crying? He's the reason they're allowed to take it right now. He should be here. Defend your own stack, damn it. Meanwhile, it looks like Ace left alone, but the stack is still a massive objective, and yeah, Game of Gladiators are going to take a majority of it. It's not even trade. Not even close. So much extra golden XP for Duraccio, man. Oh. Look at him. 4,500 net worth on this Bristleback. A hero that has been Oof. dominating lately is the most accelerated Bristleback I've seen in a minute. I feel like XG had to defend that. Like, maybe you don't take the fight. Maybe you don't Dyer's commit in, but at least attack. split the XP a bit more. You know, make them think about Look it. Look at this sneaky little move. Durancho, he's going to play aggressive They're here. going for the kill. XM doesn't know that he is surrounded by heroes right now. Stampede's going to go off. Radiant's Assassinate is not is nearly top. enough damage, though. Yeah, he's lucky to get out of there. We are once more seeing game and pick up the pace, ramp up the pressure. Bring numbers to these towers. Ace is gonna go for the solo kill here. Has been I mean, that, that situation did Radiant's also show what you were talking about, why it's a good AM game. It also means it's a good stampede game. There's no stuns. They can TP away all the time, except against the Brewmaster, which DY is currently pitted against. Ultimate being used. And now Tofu's gonna come in, scare off Ame from fighting back against Ace. Chase him out from the tower area. Yeah, this is not a fun lane for Ami anymore. Though most AM lanes are not too fun past that 7-8 minute mark. Is under attack. Did have a decent time after he got that kill. That, that was pretty big for them down there. Decent amount of XP into the group stroke as well. But I go back to the question of, you know, what moves are you going to make in this game as XG? Is this just going to be another game of you're dodging, you're split pushing, you're reacting to Gaiman and their game plan. Oh, got him on the spell shield. Yeah, but is he, is he actually out of here? Three seconds, two seconds, a little bit more time. If he can blink to the other side of this trees into the river, he is good. Leaves DY again, so that is back to back to back deaths for DY. He's not having a fun time this last three minutes. Radiant's bottom time. Pick up the aisle on the other end. Something going their way and some more acceleration for the Centaur. Not the worst outcome for XG here. I mean, again, you're just trying to prevent as many deaths for the AM as you can. That's the name of the game. 
does get to pick up his item from the secret shop as well. A little efficiency going there. Last hit for Ace, though. Happy about that one. And I mean, this urn got some value for him early. Now he's just going to go straight into the Radiance. Having the time of his life on this brew. Yeah, he's going to be big. I mean, they can help the AM survive all they want, but my concern is they don't have a way to take any towers, right? I feel like Extreme's lineup is very bad at taking towers early. Never tally. Okay, I would love to see this Centaur take that tower with Retaliate. I would love to see him make that happen. Yeah, he's got zero points in it. Yeah. The, uh, so if they don't take any towers, how good are you really at split pushing? You know, Game and Gladiators are going to be taking your objectives. They may not be able to kill the AM, but they are going to take all your towers. Thunder God's Wrath and Demonic Ooh. Purge and Shadow Poison all not enough. God damn. Batrider tanky. Coming in from behind, Ace has his ultimate. So. I mean, this is the mid collapse that Gaiman want to push here. Yeah. It's very similar to game one. You have this Zeus around the mid tower. This is the tower you want to keep up if you're XG. How much are you willing to commit to make that fight happen? And can you even take that fight if Gaiman are willing to commit everybody into it? Like, Sniper just makes these mid skirmishes really hard in the early game. If he has Shrapnel, it's really annoying to fight into. If he has max attacks range, it's really annoying to fight into. You don't have the gap close yet. You bring a Brewmaster from the side. You bring this IO Bristle pair off a of reload. If Zeus gets caught at the end of that leap, he's just gone. And then what does your team fight look like? Yeah, but they're going to one-shot the Sniper. They've got Blink Dagger on Centaur. Radiant's Blink, Inkswell, Stomp, Double Edge, Inkswell Explosion, maybe another Double Edge. Stampede, like that, surely the sniper dies to that before you can react. Yeah, six seconds of the IO, the bat, and the brew doing nothing. Okay, nice little pick off. I mean, it did, took less than six seconds to kill Brewmaster. I mean, these jumps are what you have to play around. I, I, yeah. I agree. Radiant's like, Inkswell Centaur is, is he is your playmaker this game, tower. so you better under play through attack. him. Try and find farm with the other heroes. Just slow this game down as much as possible. Drag the bristle around the map. 14 minute wisdom rune. Once again, extreme. Not really in a strong enough position post laning phase to trade defend it, their wisdom runes. EY gets the exchange. Oh yeah, good work. Mega value for him. Very good. Ag's done, however, that is. That's pretty terrifying. Duraccio has had a very smooth game here. The faster you get that Ags up, the faster you start farming through everything as well. So he is going to be big this game. He's going to be big. And he is perhaps the biggest problem for XG as well. Like their, their heroes just don't really directly answer. They indirectly answer them by abusing the weaknesses of Gaiman's lineup. Being able to take Radiant's mobile fights, get on the back line, take out some of the other heroes, and maybe kill the Bristol last. But if Duraccio is strong enough that he can just force early Roshans down, get early Aegis, start pummeling these towers, and for make you fight him, there's not much Ame's going to do to sway that exchange. Yeah. Like, you go and burn Radiant's some man off the Bristol back, he gets loaded up from the aisle. I mean, what, what are you doing here? So, like you said, XG's biggest thing for them right now is... Finding a way to get these tier one towers. I don't know how they're gonna really do it. It looks tough, man, but they need these tier one towers down to let the Battle Fury AM create some pressure on the map. Because right now, the, there's none being created. And that means Duracho is just gonna have a free for all here. Shifu doesn't even try and turn around. He clears out the creep wave, says, okay, I got what I came here for, which is golden experience. Pushing out a lane somewhere. Radiance top tower is under attack. I mean, I almost feel like it's time to start backstabbing some waves behind tier ones, behind tier twos. Yep. Make gaming go to parts of the map they don't Radiance want to play in right now. They have the vision for it as well. They have the vision. Do they have words? Like AM can do it. Maybe Centaur could do it. That's it. See, this is, the, this is the area you don't want to be getting caught in, because 
This, these are the camps that Gaiman naturally want to invade. They naturally want to play here around their vision, take the farm away from you, cut waves Dyer's aggressively, and tower push these towers off of kills. So if you die under these wards, it's going to be really costly. Whereas if you're if you're split pushing a bit heavier, I mean, it can't be everybody, but these are just death zones right now. There is no answer to the Bristleback. And now they're just going to take down a tier two at 16 and a half in this game. Yep. I think the, the, the Aghanim Scepter is Radiant really big for for Soul, don't get me wrong, but I feel like it's almost the shard is more impactful just because it's not like Extreme is going to fight you right now. So the shard, okay, maybe I spoke too soon. They're going to try and defend this a little bit. The shard actually allows you to be able to get in there and catch some of these heroes and almost do enough damage to bring down XXS, though the bit of blade mail armor protects him just enough. Blade mail, nice versus hero. Again, you're gonna have some soft answers, but man, does Io help him overcome those? Yeah, a hey, tough hero to bring down. We we saw him already kind of overcome it, and just with the Io being tethered to him, it, at some point he's gonna get bloodstone, and so the the blade mail isn't gonna do damage anymore. He's just gonna outheal whatever damage is being done. There's gotta, the Io shard you can get as well. I mean, ideally you find some pickoffs. Continue to use this Centaur Blink Ink Swamp Link. You don't even have to win the fight. If you just find some... Go for the kill. IO. Got him. With the Ink Swell Explosion yeah, and a good amount of damage onto the Bristleback as well. Lasso goes out. The Zeus is in trouble. Quinn doing some damage. Stampede goes out and looks like XS is out. able to get back fast enough. Though XXS is not going to be as lucky. He's going to be left behind. Gets a dying hoof stomp out before he falls. And Game and Gladiators are back at it on the tower offense. I think that type of play conceptually is is fine though for XG. Ideally, you don't lose your centaur there. I'm not saying that's a good trait, but yeah, or you Shinkyu's Shadow Demon dead. Oh my god! What? That, was, that was a disgusting kill. They got long range poke again. Not as much as they had last time, but they still got it. That sniper is a hell of an annoying hero to play against. Yeah, but you are looking for these. You know, you want to find the one or two support kill into Stampede the hell out of there. And that's all time for the anti-mage to, to farm up, which is what you're really looking for out of these exchanges. You're not looking for the straight on five on five. The pace, however, is absurd here. A second tier two being pressure before it's They found the sniper. Oh, that's exactly who you want. Can they blow him up? Thunder God's Wrath goes out. The IO comes in, but gets disrupted. Now they got the grab there from the Grimstroke onto two heroes. So the sniper's dead. Can they keep going? Or is this Brewmaster for us? The Bristol back going to be too much for them to be able to fight through. Duraccio's getting a little bit low, but XM is getting lower. He'll die first before Celery or Duraccio goes down. They both survive on about 200 HP. And Ame not confident enough to join that fight. Oh. Probably rightly so, but that's the difficulty. The longer you stay in these skirmishes, they're just 4v5s. Huge sniper pickup for them. At this point, you gotta get the hell out, but that tornado catches XM. I think mid leap. Actually, a ridiculous timing from Ace here. Seals his fate. Another very tough 4v5. XG have been forced into here. And now, are they gonna lose their tormentor? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Stream Gaming are going to stick around the area. Oh my... Wait, what? <laughs> that actually nice works like that. disruption, nerd. <laughs> that actually works like that. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I guess so. How is that a thing? He's not even in the plane with the heroes. <laughs> Was this guy quilling from the, the ether? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Bristleback transcends realms to get his quills where they want to go. Structure. Not the IO, instead for the Batrider. Not who they wanted to get the shard to, but that's okay. That's the enemy tormentor. <laughs> Tofu had a good laugh at uh, Jin Q for that one. How's Ame doing? He's got Battle Fury, Manta, working towards Axe. Cannot fight until the Axe is online. I think. That's my view of it anyway, but he may be forced into fighting soon. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's anti mage. Lasso right as they went for Blink off of the Centaur. Double, double now, They still could potentially get something off of this one, though. XXS looks like Quinn with the back lines. He can't keep chasing it again. The disruption only does so much to stop Duraccio. Still got some damage onto XM, so he had a TP out. 
Space for the image. How much space, though? Gets one ancient camp. Yo, males are my creeps. Okay, you can have They are not. Goodbye, Ami. I'm kind of surprised Ami hasn't been cutting more ways. Well, he was doing that in the bottom lane. He was, like, behind the tier two. But I mean really Dyer's aggressively cutting, because there's attack. not much lockdown for him in this game. That's the benefit of the pig. Like, he could be behind tier twos, right? I think that's where he wants to generally be. Like, there's no way Gaiman want to go back to try and kill him. They don't have the catch to do it. He's going to free farm that area of the map. He's going to cut waves. Cut the waves wherever Gaiman want to push. Pretty annoying for them. And again, I don't think he can really join these fights. So there's no, no benefit to being near his team. Missed his axe. That's a lot of damage that was missed there, but they get the damage all the same. No response from Extreme to try and protect XM underneath his Tier 2 tower. Nobody wants to fight this Bristleback, and for good reason. He's got a Bloodstone. He's got an IO tethered to him. This man is probably untouchable. Radiance and it's another sustained base lineup for Gaiman that is really taking the air out of this Deuce's sails. This hero just sucks against you. Yeah, flat out sucks. He's all chip magic damage. You're just sitting there regening up. Zeus is useless. So kind of an interesting idea from Gaming in both these games. Where they've presented a healing support versus a Zeus spellcaster lineup. And we saw XG ban that Abaddon for a reason. Like they felt very annoyed by that hero in the fight. Isle's doing a similar thing here. Where was it uh, banned? What part of the... I mean, they banned it fifth, so, mm. you know, their one second phase ban they had, they spent it on the app. Trying to get the distance to maybe blink away, but his damage over time from the flame break was burning him out, so... Just tries to kill some creeps. Help Ame with a split push of duties. That's, uh... He is almost to his Aghanim Scepter. Though, is the Aghanim Scepter gonna make that much of a difference? I mean, it helps get the mana burn consistently. Yeah. So I guess you maybe can end up in a situation where you burst his IO, mana burn the bristle, and then look for the jump on the sniper, and that type of fight can be okay. Well, they better come up with an idea quick, because Game of Gladiators... And this is this is vintage gaming right here. 24 yep. minute high ground. Not even waiting for second ages. First, that's enough. This bristle got way too much out of the early game. What's your answer? You're going to cut the waves. This is the best thing you can do here. You're going to get the backdoor protection back up. You are going to outfarm Gaiman during this one-minute push. But the sniper is a shoot. And he's got three minutes on this Aegis. Can't do anything with it. DY trying to cut the mid-wave. Gets an invis rune, but Tofu had a sentry. Pull him back into position where the Assassinate can finish him off. Axe reveal. Take it out of your mana, son. Get a little resource burn there. Gaming Gladiators go high ground again, this time mid lane, where they have protected that creep wave by killing DY. Still two and a half on this Aegis, man. There's just so much time to work with. Though I will say, they're going down a different lane now because of the lane cutting. This is a little inefficient. Right? You're just getting a lot of tier three damage. You're splitting damage between multiple tier threes. I mean, it's only inefficient if you only take one lane of Brax. What if they take mid and bottom? What if they're just not going to stop? What if Ame takes a lane? And they're going to force the fight while he's... I mean, this is splitting the focus from Gaiman. Stampede trying to get back. The Centaur will survive. They got the Brew Teleport. And they got the Aegis off the ult. What can XG do with this? Ame does not want to go back until he has to, for sure. You want to keep the pressure up. I mean, Ame's now strong enough that he can be actively cutting two waves, so he could be cutting both mid and bottom. Showed himself for a second, immediately start backing himself away. Knowing the Batrider's no, trying no to hunt stun. him down right now. No way to catch this guy. 
I mean, even if they get the lasso on him, is it ever going to be enough no. stun? No, there's no way. You need like Hex or, or Orchids on people on top of the lasso. Which is something gaming can build into here. You know, you can always itemize for what you lack in Dota 2. For example, Austin, you, you lack Gravitas in, in character. You could probably buy a, a Bloodthorn for that. <laughs> what does a Bloodthorn have to do with those things? Dyer's has been killed. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, just, what? you just chose a random item, bitch. You could buy, you could buy uh, a heart. They mech the creep wave to keep it alive. So Game of Gladiators have another creep wave protected to go high ground again. And that wave behind it is also not getting cut. I mean, he's just run, run, run down top here. Is this just going to be two lanes without contest? Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's middle barracks are under attack. This whole game is kind of bizarre to me because it just feels like you gave him IO Radiant Bristle. Barracks, the Bristle went in the second phase. Soulbind goes out, lasso, pull him back. No, instant counter with the ink swell. Oh, nice. That's nice. But is it enough to stop Gaming Gladiators from that taking enough? a second lane of barracks? And it's For not Ame. looking like it right now. Stampede going out. Ame, he's taking a lane as well, so Gaming Gladiators have to take this. Cue the theme from Attack on Titan. Ame's doing it. Uh, oh, that's a stomping uh, swell on three. Okay. Can they get a kill? No. They're going for Ayo. <laughs> they can't get a kill, man. They don't have any damage. Ame got a Rax. Ame did get a Rax. Ame's going for a second Rax. All right, finish this up. TP back. Or go for Magos? It's getting a little weird. It is getting a little funky. I mean, Gaming just decided to commit. They have another wave coming in, so they can go for the Megas here. They've decided to just make the call, give Ame some lanes. He cannot Megas them in return. They're still tier two mid. That's true. So he has to take this fight, I think. Ame is going to have to be the one to come back. After he takes this building, there's nothing left to do. But will he have a team that is still left alive by the time he gets back? Because XM's Time. already dead with no buyback. Now Time Centaur the coming back in, goes for the jump, in with the ink swell. Tries to get it to help out Ame, get a land here of these stuns. Take it on top of Quinn, Ooh. hit him with the mana void. Stop some of Celery, what he's doing, but it's taking so long. He's out of mana, which yes. means there's no more damage for Ame. He can't kill oh anything. My God. Well, this strat fell completely fat, fl flat in this game. As there's just not enough time. Gaven came back in full force today in this series, ready to pick up the pace, ready to jam it in early. 30 minute mega creeps. I, 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 ju I just you go back to the 15. beginning. I go back to why of all the teams would you do this to? Why would you do it to Game and well, Gladiator? Because they haven't been informed. Well, obviously not the case for this Dream League, not the case for this matchup. Game and Gladiators in good enough form to be able to take on Extreme Gaming. Uh, and frankly, does any it. team need to be in good form with that hero? I mean, this hero's terrifying right now. Yeah. And they did not have direct answers to him in. He also had the acceleration off the stolen stacks. Just a dream personal back game here for Duraccio. Finishes at 13-1 and 9. Basically untouchable outside of that one early game rotation. And I mean, what does that really do to stop his trajectory?